I'm a former visa officer, and why do visa officers refuse B1, B2 visas? Well, the most common way that a B1, B2 visa is getting refused is under the clause 214B. Now, the numbers and the letter, all, all that that means for you is that that's the clause that the visa officers use to make most of the refusals that are based on their judgment. That's the clause that lets them, whenever they feel that it's appropriate, refuse your visa based on ties. These ties are ostensibly the ties to your home country that are going to draw you back there after you go to the US and then you are going to be assumed to be returning home. Now, what are the main reasons, the two main reasons, that a visa officer is going to use 214B to refuse your visa? The first reason is because they simply, they don't believe you. They don't believe that you're telling them the truth. If the visa officer doesn't trust you, the visa officer is not going to issue you your visa. No matter what you tell them, the visa officer has to trust you. They're very suspicious. And the reason they're suspicious is because there are many visa applicants who go into the visa interview and they are misled by agents or they have, uh, they have bad intent and they lie to the visa officer. Every single day, a visa officer catches visa applicants telling lies. And so what is the visa officer going to do when they find a few visa applicants who have told them lies? They're going to assume that there's the chance that every single visa applicant might be telling them a lie. So they're suspicious and understandably so. You should know that you're going into a conversation with someone who's very suspicious, who does not necessarily believe what you're telling them from the very beginning. Many people make the big mistake of using one word answers to answer the visa officer's questions. This doesn't bring the visa officer from this very suspicious state to an area of trust. It leaves them with lots of questions. Also, if, when you're unnatural, giving answers that are contrived and obviously memorized, this is not what engenders trust in the visa officer and they're going to refuse your visa. So that's reason number one, is that they don't trust you. They think that you're lying to them. They think that you're not telling them the truth. If you can't overcome that, you're not going to get your visa, you're not going to get your B1, B2. This applies to other visa classes as well, and you're going to get refused under 214B. Now, the second main reason why the visa officer might refuse you for your B1, B2 visa is that even though they believe everything that you're telling them, they believe what you tell them is your, uh, your purpose of travel, your job, your finances, your family, they believe everything you've told them, however, they think that it doesn't rise to the level that lets them issue the visa. And what's that level? That's the level of ties that we're talking about. And what's a good rubric that we can use, a good standard that we can use to measure that? It's basically if they think that your life in your home country is better than your life would be if you were to remain in the US undocumented, then they will be willing to issue you your visa because that's a draw that's going to bring you back to your home country because your life is better there. Not just your current life, but your prospects for a better life in the future, right? So this is what you need to know that they are considering when they're asking you these questions about your finances, about your family, about other family members, about your pri prior travels. They're trying to, to get a picture of you and your life and your potential and your prospects and your family and your socioeconomic conditions to decide if, if issuing you the visa is giving you an incentive to stay in the US long-term undocumented because that's going to be a better life choice than to return to your home country. So even though they believe everything you're saying, if those, if those criteria, if those, those facts that you tell them don't rise above that level, then they're going to refuse your visa. So what can you do to avoid this? This second part? Well, you can make sure that the information that you're giving the visa officer is actually the best information. So many applicants have one bank account that's separate for some reason, or just one parent's bank account. And when they're asked for a statement, they show that one because it shows the bare minimum amount of funds uh, that are going to pay for this trip to the US. No, 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 no. You always want to show the most qualifications you possibly can, not the minimum that you think you need to satisfy. If you're applying for a student visa, this this definitely applies to your tuition. You don't want one bank account that you've set up in America with the exact amount of the tuition 
that you're going to be paying. No, you want to show the full breadth of you and your family's financial resources. Never show less when you can show more. If you apply for a job and they ask you, what's your level of education? And you say, I have a bachelor's degree because that's the bare minimum required for this job but you have a master's degree as well, what you're selling yourself short. You're not giving the, the most impressive part of your credentials. You're, you're only sticking to the bare minimum. Okay, give the most as you possibly can of your credentials academically, professionally, financially. Uh, if that includes your parents' resources as well, then include those, especially for people that are young. This can be, and young is a relative term, people who are young adults, definitely can still rely on their parents' financial stability in the visa interview. So, number one, you need to make them trust you. Don't go in with contrived answers. Know what you want to talk about and go in and speak naturally and speak fully about your situation and your plans to the visa officer. This is going to help them get to the point where they can trust you. Two, make sure that what you're highlighting are your actual highlights, not just bare minimums that you think satisfy the requirements for the visa class. Always show the full breadth of your, your credentials and your qualifications. Show the most possible in order to get the visa officer over that bar, over that suspicion to where they think, okay, your life, your prospects in your home country are definitely better than what they would be staying in the U.S. undocumented. That's how you're going to get your visa issued.